Why are these two glass globes filled with colored liquid hanging in this window? And what do they have to do with drugstores 100 years ago? Well, these are called show globes. Stick around and I'll tell you about it later in this video. I'm building this 112 scale model of a Sears kit house. These houses were sold as kits by Sears between 1908 and 1942. This house is from 1913. You could buy anything from the Sears catalog back then. Sears was the Amazon of its day. I haven't glued this window into the wall yet. This is so I can easily remove it and paint it. It's always easier to paint the parts of your diorama before you attach them. I purchased these windows off the internet. I think they look pretty good. The window actually opens and closes. I think they're going to look great in the miniature house. The first step is to tape off the areas where you don't want the paint. Make sure you use the proper green or blue painter's tape. Whether you're painting a miniature or a full-size room in your house, taping off the areas where you don't want paint is really critical. This takes extra effort and time, but it's well worth it to make your painting job look professional. I'm taping off the windows and the moving parts of the window. Press the painter's tape down to make sure you seal it so you don't get any paint on the parts of the window frame you don't want painted. I'm using some semi-gloss paint that I purchased in a sample size. Check out my video on painting tips and tricks. I'll show you some other ways you can save money when you're working on your next painting project. I'll leave a link in the description. I gave the window two light coats of paint rather than one thick layer of paint. Two light coats will stop the paint from building up in all the fine details of the windows. The advantages of using latex paint is that it's easy to clean up afterwards. Just rinse your brushes with some water and let them dry out and you can use your brushes again. Carefully remove the painter's tape. I use some furniture oil on portions of the window that open and close. It'll make the wood grain stand out and it won't damage the window tracks. Don't use paint, varnish, or other stuff like that on the window track. You'll clog up the tiny window tracks and you won't be able to open and close the windows. I'm using a Q-tip to apply the furniture oil to the window. Hey, if you're enjoying my videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. As a new YouTuber, it really helps me out. And it really makes my day knowing somebody actually liked one of my videos. And if you've already subscribed to my channel, well, I just want to say thank you. And I think you're awesome. So it's 1913 and I'm in the process of building my Sears kit house I purchased through the catalog from Sears Roebuck. It would have been shipped out to me by train and customers with limited construction experience could build them in just three months, according to Sears. Less than 20 years ago, in 1897, they discovered a wonder drug which could relieve pain, fever, and inflammation. That wonder drug was aspirin. And a decade ago, in 1901, they discovered the different types of blood, A, B, O, etc., making blood transfusions much safer. In 1906, tuberculosis killed one in every 500 people in the United States. And in the 1910s, Tuberculosis caused more deaths than any other infectious disease. 
The year is 1913 and I'm building my 112 scale model Sears kit house. They've just come up with a new x-ray process for detecting breast cancer. It's called mammography. It'll be another eight years before insulin is discovered in 1921. Insulin enables diabetics to control this once fatal disease and it'll be yet another 15 years before they discover penicillin in 1928. So let's have a look at the Sears catalog and see what we could get in the way of medications. Many people didn't live near drugstores and Sears being the Amazon of its day would ship whatever you needed directly to your town. Sears not only sold farm equipment but they also had specific catalogs for doctors, surgeons and dentists. Here are some of the medicines listed in the Sears catalog. This one claims to cure obesity. Notice the wording of this ad in the catalog. Fat folks, take Dr. Rose's obesity powders. Too much fat is a disease and a source of great annoyance to those afflicted. Send at once for a box of Dr. Rose's obesity cure. It's perfectly harmless and it's also claimed that there were no bad results following its use. So maybe you need some reliable worm syrup or worm cakes so you can save your children from suffering and in some cases save their lives, says the ad. Every mother ought to have a bottle of the syrup or a box of cakes always in the house. The syrup is more pleasant to taste and more suitable for young children. The cakes can be given to older people. Even adults can benefit by using them. Or you could always buy some Peruvian wine of coca. 63 cents while the regular price would be $1. That's equivalent to about $70 today. Peruvian wine of coca is made from coca leaves and according to the description containing the correct proportions of Peruvian bark, coca leaves, ginger, and port wine. It's 1913 and it's expected that next year in 1914, the Harrison Narcotic Act will outlaw cocaine in the United States. What are we gonna do without our Peruvian port wine? Coca-Cola was invented by a pharmacist named John Pemberton in 1885. He first made the drink in his backyard. The drink contained extracts of coca leaf. Cola comes from the cola nut, which contains caffeine. The drink was initially marketed to help with headaches, fatigue, and nausea. Such medication allowed people to cure common ailments. Many of these ingredients today are considered addictive. Very small amounts of cocaine were used in Coca-Cola right up until 1921 when the cocaine was completely removed from the drink. This is a Peruvian 7-Eleven I saw when I was in Peru. Machu Picchu in Peru should go on everybody's bucket list. It's an amazing place to see. The native people of Peru are called the Inca. They almost always seem to be chewing on dried coca leaves. They also make a tea with the leaves, not much flavor to it. And chewing on the leaves is supposed to help with altitude sickness. The altitude of Machu Picchu is 7,900 feet. Higher than Machu Picchu is Bodie, California with an altitude of 8,400 feet. I did a video about Bodie which I'll link at the end of this video. Check it out, it's a really interesting story. Here we see a shaman doing one of their rituals. Coca leaves are a key component of this ceremony. This particular shaman is one of the highest levels of Inca shaman because he was actually struck by lightning. The shaman is in the center wearing the orange and the fellow to his right is his son. The other guy was one of our tour guides. The Inca believed the wool from the llamas and alpacas were gifts from the gods. The Inca had technology that we don't even understand today. Look at the size of these stone blocks that form this wall. The joints between the rocks are so perfect you can't even stick a credit card into the cracks between these massive boulders. And they use no cement. As well, think of the foundation and the weight of these walls. And the technology that's required just so that these walls don't sink into the ground. Or fall apart during an earthquake. These walls have stood the test of times for hundreds of years. This is a sundial in Machu Picchu. When the people of Europe still thought the world was flat and Christopher Columbus hadn't yet discovered America, the Inca knew the world was round and were using sundials. Other medical procedures that the Inca were using hundreds of years ago included brain surgery. You'll notice the skull on the right. It appears to have healed. We can tell because the rounded edges that have formed on the bone. The body was starting to repair the bone caused by the surgical hole in the skull. And this was done hundreds of years ago. So here we have the two show globes I showed you at the beginning of the video. Nobody really knows the true origin of why these vessels became associated with pharmacists. 
pharmacists. But when you saw them in the window of a store, you knew there was a pharmacist and this was a drugstore. Much like the red and white barber poles. Some say the origins of these globes go back to the days of Julius Caesar, about 100 BC, when the Romans invaded England. Another theory says the origins of these globes comes from the Middle East. The first show globes arrived in the United States in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. Pharmacists would display these globes in their shop windows, and we do know that from the early 1800s to as late as the 1950s in the United States, most pharmacists would display a show globe in their shop window. Pharmacists would pride themselves on their ability to create vibrant colors by combining chemicals from their carefully guarded recipes. The globes were a way of displaying the pharmacist's abilities and skills. So there you have it, the window's been painted and installed. And this is the video I told you about earlier. It's a story about Bodie, California, a ghost town. So click on it and check it out. We'll see you in the next video.